Welcome to Daily Zohar. This Shi'ur is dedicated to the Refuah Shlema of Itzchak Kadesh Ben Demora and for the Hatzlacha and Parnasa of Ilan Ben Zion, Yonatan Ben Rachamim, and Feigal Sara Bat Reuven Lev. Kadosh Baruch Hu should grant them with Shefa, Baracha, Hatzlacha, Abundance, Osher, Va Osher. The Zohar says, Come and see Tachazeh. בשעה שהאדם מתקן מעשיו על ידי הקורבן בשעתה דברנשנה מתקן עובדיו על ידי קורבנה When a person fixes his actions by bringing a קורבן כולה יתבשם everything gets fragrant ומתקרב ומתקשר זה בזה and the things come closer and become connected one another and how does it come? It comes by Yechut Shalem, with a complete unification. Zeshen that's what it was said, Adam, a person, ki yakriv mechem, a person, shows an entity, ki yakriv, he's going to yakriv milshon, not only korban, sacrifice, yakriv milshon karov, to bring about. So when you bring an offering to, to Hashem for your sin or whatever it is, it's not because of anything, more of a matter of bringing closer, you feel closer mm -hmm. so you bring something, the same thing you don't just give gift to strangers, you give gifts to those who are close to you not necessarily those who are, that you want something from like most people would do they want something for you so they give you gifts not just you feel close to somebody, you want to share with that individual something of you, so you'll, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter, I mean, a little sidetrack, according to Kabbalah, everything that you have has a possession of, any, any of your possession has a little spark of you in it, so when you give from yourself to somebody, it's not only that you're giving them an item, you're giving them a piece of yourself, in other words, when you're offering to something to someone, it's like take a piece of my heart, not baby. So, you know who thinks that, huh? Do homework. So, take a piece of me. Okay? Take a little, take a little bit. You know who thinks that one? <laughs> so. Give a little bit. Give a little bit of your heart to me. That's what I mean. But the other one is give a piece of my heart. Take a piece. So you feel closer. You want to give a piece of yourself, something of yourself. And what do you give from yourself is your neshama, is a piece of your soul, a spark of your soul to a person. That's why stealing becomes very bad because you are stealing something from the person, from him. It's not just the object. The object is, doesn't make a difference. You get another object, but you're taking a piece of his neshama from it, and that's why Geneva is a very bad thing. And so therefore, Yakriv le kasher advarim karaoi, to bring the things appropriately. Come and see. Adam ki Yakriv, when a person makes a korban, and we say Adam, who do we refer to Adam, a person? We say we refer to a complete entity. This is a very important. Uh, part of the Zohar to help us explain other things as well. Some of the things I told you in regards to, in reference to other things, but you'll see really where it's coming from. Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, I thought about it myself and then years later, I said, oh my goodness, it says there. So, okay. So, it's nothing new under the sun. So, who we refer to when we say Adam? Lehotzi. Lehotzi, to exclude Mishelon Asaisha, whoever is not married. Ki korbano, eno korban. His korban is not considered to be korban. Vebrachot enan imtzorot etzlo. And he's not going to be uh, filled with the uh, blessings, with brachot. Lo lemala, lo lemata. Not up there, not down here. Mashma, we can learn from here. 
שכתוב אדם כי יקריב, a person, אדם, a human, so we can learn from here שאין הוא אדם ולא בכלל אדם הוא. אוקיי, okay, let's not jump the gun, it's not that unmarried people are not human beings, that's not what it means. But in terms of the spiritual entity of a person, he is not in that category. And the divine inspiration does not dwell upon him. Why? Because he is blemished. And he look and he's called. What's a Baal Mum? A what? No, what is a Baal Mum? Blemished. He has a disability. Uval Mum. Nitrachek mea kol, and Baal Mum, like a Kohen or something like this, is not allowed to come in, he has blemish, right? Nitrachek mea kol, kol sheken, mea mizbech, like Rivka Bani, even more so from the mizbech, he doesn't even do anything, but even more so, he's not allowed to bring Korban, even the Korban itself has to be completely without any blemish, so is the person who is bringing it, Alachat Kama Vechama, even more so, the person who brings it has to be without any blemish. כל שכן מהמזבח להרבי קרובן. How do we know that? ונדב ואביהו מוכחים. And the, to prove that we can look at נדב and אביהו, uh, the two sons of Aharon that died upon bringing the אש זרה. Why did they die? You know, we had Aharon. We had אלעזר and איתמר, the Kohanim, נדב ואביהו. There were four Kohanim. <coughs> the different explanations about that. You know, they did something extra, they did this, they did that. There's always a totally different angle about it. They brought Korban just like anybody else. And you see that they weren't wicked people because Moshe Rabbeinu tells our own, they were on a higher level than us. So... Why did they die? They didn't die for anybody's sins. Custer died for your sins. You know, nobody. What, what happened to them? Shekatu vatetze esh milifnei Hashem, and a fire came from upon Hashem. Mochichim, so that's what it is. Shehu mitam, and the reason was mitam shelo hayu nisuim, because they were not married. Itamar, and Elazar had were married, and they had children. They weren't. Umishimze, and because of that, katu Adam ki akriv milchem korban, a human, a person. What should I say, a person? Adam hanimtza zachar venekeva. Atem kruim Adam. David is smiling. I don't know why, but I'll, I'll catch him later. Why is he smiling? Atem kuim Adam, smirking. You see, he's getting, he's blemishing. Atem kuim, you are called Adam, right? That's what the Torah says. Atem kuim Adam, you. Who is you? Zachar venekeva, male and female. And a person, Adam animtza zachar venekeva, He's appropriate to bring Korban. In other words, now you see from here something very interesting. How much the Zohar also is trying to teach you how you should relate to your wife. How you should look upon the relationship between your wife. You are not two different entities. Your starting point on your relationship to be we are one. We are one shoulder to shoulder, back to back. We are one on all missions. Our goals are equal. Our mission is the same. If you have a team in enemy territory, you cannot have half of a team with one mission and the other half of a team with a different mission. The team was sent to do a mission. If you want them to switch mission, cancel for one, and they move the whole team to the other side. You can't do it otherwise. 
So what do you learn from it? That's a, it's in parentheses. How do you, how could you come and have, uh, consider yourself to be one entity and your wife a different entity? You could, I mean, there's no prevention of you to do that, but you know, this is we said before. Everything has a price, even if it's cheap, even if it's free, it all has a price. And the price you're going to pay, you're going to pay it in interest or with interest. And how's it going to be? Your kids. Your kids. Kids are brilliant. Again and again and again. We don't give our kids the appropriate credit in which they deserve. Our kids are brilliant. And sometimes we let people that don't deserve any credit to educate our well-deserved credit kids, and we get what we get. Kids learn how to do that, and they operate on the divide and conquer beautifully. They know that daddy says one thing, and they'll go to mommy, she says something else, just because daddy says one thing, or the other way around. And they will play on that. And what will happen is, you're going to get little monsters at home. And then when we grow up, they're going to be big monsters. And it just gets worse from there. When we say, Ishto ke gufo, his wife like his body, we mean that. You are one entity. But you have to love and respect her more than yourself. That's your, by the way, starting point. That's not your goal. That's your starting point. And if you don't do that, I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you. That's why you have to pick the right wife and the right husband. I mean, not of course for you guys, but the right wives. One who would speak the same language as you. Not necessarily that she speaks Chinese and you speak, uh, I don't know, uh, Zulu. That doesn't make a difference. You know what you what you were trying to achieve here. If you don't do that, your life is not a life. Your life is not a life. Lo ba'alamaze, lo ba'alamaze. The wife wants you to learn, you want to make money, you have a problem. And everything else in life like that. This is, this is how, this is this, by the way, that's why I said this is all in parentheses because that's what the Zohar assumes, that this is your starting point. I mean, people don't agree from how big or how small and how they're going to do the wedding. If that what you cannot agree on, how are you going to live the rest of your life? I don't understand. That difference doesn't make. If you cannot agree on something so minor as your wedding day, how are you going to agree to the rest of your life? And now let's hear the rest of the story. And it goes like this. And it says, only a person who is complete, Zahar v'nekeva, ra'ui, להעמיד או להקריב קורבן זה ולא אחר, היא אין nobody else. What do we say that Kohen Gadol on Yom HaKippurim has to have two wives? Because he cannot stand in front of Hashem on behalf of Kol Klal Yisrael and the rest of the people of the world when he's not complete. That's why we take him a, a, uh, a I would say a standby wife, more of like uh, you know, reserves, you know, we have a reserves. She's on reserve duty, right? In case this one will die, so he has another wife. Just because of that. He's doing the job in Yom Kippurim. So he goes, Rabbi Abba said, Afalpi, even though we established in Dave Aviu, right, is because they weren't married, Aval Ktorit, he el Yonami kol Aktorot Shebaolam. Baktorit is different. Is superior to all the other korbanot in the world. Because of it, the bracha comes to the upper worlds and to the lower worlds. 
והקורבן הזה שהוא למעלה מכל הקורבנות לא היו ראויים הם להקריב. And the reason, so we just say, how about the rest of the korbanot? They were supposed to, Hashem told them, you're right, the rest of the korbanot they could have done. This one they weren't entitled to, because the Torah is the, the, the peak, is the top of the pyramid of all korbanot. Why? Because they were not married. Because they were not married. Even for a korban, they weren't to. So for sure, for a toret, without a doubt, they were not, uh, were not allowed to bring. A person who is not married, right, it is inappropriate for him to, or improper for them to be, everybody else to be blessed from a person who himself is not blessed. You understand? You want to get a person. Why you, would you go to a person who is blessed to bless you? Because you want, apparently he's the pipe, he's the, so you go to him. You want to try to tap into that. Are you going to put a faucet on an empty well? <laughs> it's not going to work. Are you going to fill up your tub with an empty, with a bucket that holds in it? You see how important to have a wife is? To have a proper wife. That's probably the first important decision you will make in your life, or maybe the most important decision of your life is who you're going to marry. So don't be fooled with with uh, six inch, uh, sixteen inches of uh, alloy wheels and uh, fenders and spoilers and everything else in between. You gotta look inside. Because the reason I said it specifically is because people pick their wives. I wish as much as, they, as how they will pick their cars, they will pay more attention who they're going to, how they're going to pick their cars and who's going to spend the rest of their lives or bear their children. And I mean that. I know probably people are not going to be happy with what I'm saying, but you know, somebody got to say it. We don't joke around here. So now, and it goes like this. Uh, and if you would say, but the fire came from Hashem and consumed them, Lema, Lama ze? Why? Why did? Why did it happen? Mashal leAdam shebal ifnei Amalka. It's a parallel. A person came in front of the queen to give her the news that the king is coming to her house and is going to live in her palace and is going to rejoice with her. That man came in front of the king. The, the king, the king saw this person. He's like this, ugly, you know, whatever, whatever happens to him. Amarlo, just tell him I'll be right there, okay? Amarlo, Amelech, Amelech said to him, It's not my honor that I would give my uh, that the message for me to arrive to the queen will be with, with such an such a improper uh, presentation. As things happen, she cleaned the house for the king. Since she saw that the, the king wanted to come, but... Uh, that because of that man, the king wanted to come, but the person who gave the message to her was inappropriate. So because of him, the king now doesn't want to come. The queen is a vicious queen. Commanded that that man will be executed. That's what happens when Adav and Aviu entered with the incense in the hand. The queen, so-called, certain attribute was prepared for the big, for the big, uh, big thing to accept, to accept the king. Since saw, they are blemished. 
שעל ידיהם יבוא למלכה לשרות עימה. He didn't want it's going to be by, because of these people, that he's going to come to the queen, ונסתלק המלך ממנה. And he went away from her, moved back. מיד, as soon as this happened, כשראתה המלכה שבשבילם נסתלק המלך ממנה, when, when the, that feminine attribute, again, let's call it argument, let's call it מלכות, okay, the kingship, right? So that the melech doesn't want to come there, מיד, immediately, ותצא האש מלפני השם, and the fire came and ותאכל אותם, and consume them. וכל זה הוא, and this is only because שמי שאינו נשוי, he who is not married, נקרא פגום, הוא בעל מום, he is blemished, לפני המלך, in front of the king. וקדושת המלך משתלקת ממנו, and the holiness of Hashem goes away from him. ואינה שורה בפגם. And the bracha cannot be held in a broken vessel. Ve'al ze katuv, and on that it says, don't, don't, be, don't be afraid, because I see everybody is like eager to run out, to, okay, let's get rings, let's get married, hold on, hold on. And, and because of that it says, Adam ki yakriv mechem korban, a person will bring a korban to you. Mi she'nikra Adam, he who is called Adam, a person yakriv, or mi she'eno nikra Adam, whoever is not, live for this title, did not receive what is called mochim de gadlut, different mind, big mind, straight forward thinking, right, he thinks big, lo yakriv, you cannot bring it. So now, there is a way out, and guys, you were saved by the bell. Actually, you were saved more like with the, uh, the uh, you know, but you were saved by the bell, what do I mean? Every person needs to get married. It's unhealthy not to be married. Mentally, you usually live longer. Assuming you're okay with your mother-in-law, you live longer. I mean, you're happy. You're married. You have children. It is good. It it is responsible to get married, so you can bring kids to this world to just to share the. Hey, how about sharing the wealth in this way? We'll bring more kids to the world, so we can actually have this this country to survive. Because you have to bring, I think, something like 1.75 kids in order to keep the number. Uh, as, as a living society rather than a dying society. Just think about it this way. I think one seven five one five. If you bring one, it's uh, Shalom al Bendodi. So, but there is a way out. And what do I mean by the way out? Since everybody needs to get married, but Misha Hashkali Bo, whoever's desired, La Asok Torah, to learn in the Torah. To learn the Torah, Keben Azai, is patu. Why? She ikarel la Torah, ayelet ahavi, my beloved one. He loves the Torah. So the Torah, you hear from, you see from here one thing. First of all, you have some time off. Don't rush to get married. As long as you learn Torah. Once you went out to trabajo and you're not learning Torah, mira hombre. <laughs> Now I need to get married. It doesn't happen like this. But as long as you learn Torah, there is an expression we call it caminando and hablando. Yeah, you're walking and you're talking. It means the things are coming. You keep on going. You're learning. You're bringing the Kedusha down. You hear from here something very important. Torah is your korban. And to the, to, when you learn Torah, it makes you like a Kohen Gadol. And you are complete when you learn Torah. Once we are talking about people who don't learn, if you learn Torah, again, to a certain point, that's why he says, Keben Azai, he had a real desire to learn Torah. Not that you said, okay, I'm learning Torah, so I don't have anything else to do with my life. I just did that, you know, an excuse not to do anything. No, no, no. Because you really desire to learn, he gets a pass. He gets a voucher, and that's okay. But if you don't, you have to get married. But once you get married, or you decided to get married, you have to do it the right way. And the right way is only do it through Torah. The only reason is why we are allowed to delay the process of marriage from or because of Torah. It's very simple. Can a person 
sit down and learn Torah when he has a, a yoke stone, a big weight on his neck. No, uh, okay. But if, it, but if his wife sends him to learn Torah, she says, Habibi Tilmad, because I don't want to be married to an Amaharetz, run, run and learn, and give her a big hug and a big kiss, and your father-in-law as well, that he had a daughter that was willing to see what is really important in life, that you would learn so your children would learn about Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu, have rachamim on us. Amen. And will let us learn Torah, besimcha, beyishuv adat, mitoch osher, bli da'agot, without any words of parnasa. All Am Yisrael should be like Kohanim Gdolim. In the Bar Kohen Shalanu, like Kohanim, we should learn Torah, betahara, besimcha, amen, keni'i, ratzon. Amen.